in the StreamYard on air Zoom webinar battle. I always felt StreamYard was winning. StreamYard is a production tool and simply put, Zoom is not. However, many felt Zoom had the advantage with features like attendee registration and the ability to bring viewers on screen for deeper engagement. That's kind of how Zoom set up. Well, StreamYard went ahead and added both y'all. <laughs> not only does on air have registration, but you can upload a CSV from your favorite event registration site or restrict registration by email domain. Lastly, you can now bring on air attendees on screen to ask questions in the most simple and fully integrated manner. This is major and I'll share how to use it step by step in the full video. So here we are on StreamYard and I have a dialog box up where I'm setting up uh, a new webinar, a new StreamYard on air. And so I've, I've selected that option. I've come through here, I've named it te uh, Test Masterclass. You can see that we have testing out Ecamm, Kajabi and StreamYard. Eh, this is just a description, no big deal. Um, we have the date, time, I've put in a thumbnail. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of moving rapidly through this part because I did do a video where we talked about some of the more finer details, but I really want to focus in on the features that they've added since I did that video. We'll put a card right here up here for you to be able to go and watch that video should you want some of the more, uh, extra details. And we'll also make sure that you get a chance to um, link to that video right at the end of this one. What I wanted to make sure you know here is that you can add destinations. You don't only have to stream to your webinar only, right? So you if you set up a webinar, you can still add destinations like Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Maybe you're adding them for members on YouTube. Maybe you're adding it for a particular smaller group somewhere on some other site, or maybe you're adding it as an unlisted video on your platforms so that you have it saved and don't have to upload it to those platforms later. There's so many different strategies that go into this, but I wanna make sure you know that you have the app option right here to be able to add that functionality. Once you have the webinar set up, you can go into the, the, the the back end of that webinar, you can actually change the branding, you change your color, you can add your logo. The thumbnail is already there from what you set up in the beginning part, but if you have the ability to do that, it does show you what the page looks like, a preview of what the page looks like, the registration page, a preview of what the emails will look like, and a preview of what the watch page looks like. Now, but I also wanted you to know that you have the ability to embed both the registration page and the registration page becomes the watch page it's not a different link. It's not a different page. The registration page becomes the watch page, I think two or so minutes before the event goes live. It just, it just becomes the watch page. And so if you have access, if you've already registered, it will simply give you that challenge question and, and allow you access to the watch page. This is what the watch page looks like when you embed it on your website, embed it. And I wanna make, make it clear, because some people are saying, well, if you embed it on the website, then people can't chat. The embed code includes the chat. You can embed the watching experience along with the chat and the chat is not only is, is fully integrated. So what that means is you can bring those comments on screen and I'll show you that in just a second. So this is what these pieces look like. Of course, we have the watch page option and I told you about the embed. You you can turn off live chat. Um, you can make you can decide whether or not people can watch this on demand or not. And based on the uh, plan that I have with StreamYard, I have a 250 uh, viewer limit. So I can have 250 people in my webinar, which is plenty for me, but I know some of you have fairly large channels with fairly large audiences, and maybe you might wanna increase that limit by going to a different tier of the plan, and you would simply increase that limit right here, or just go into your support account, you go into your account uh, details and choose a higher tier of the plan. You have some registration options here. Uh, right now, mine is set to public but I want you to see that there are two other options. One of them is of course, restrict to domains. And um, you have the ability to, to make some changes there. If you already had some registrants already register while it was public, you would have to make some changes there, but you can restrict to domains only emails. I wanna read this, only emails, right? From specified domains can register. So if you restrict it to domains, let's say, you know, howitallworks.com. If you don't have a howitallworks.com email address, then you can't register. This only works for, you know, more, more of the corporate folks who have, you know, 
uh, trainings and different things that they're doing internally that they only want their own people to register for. Uh, that's what that's for. Uh, you can restrict it to you know whatever those domains are and those people can register freely. Uh, but then you also have the private option where you only uploaded or existing registrants, you can read that there, on this webinar can access. And what that means is you can, you can use Let's say you you have, uh, I don't know, Constant Contact or uh, a Convert Kit, or you have, um, uh, what's the other one, M MailChimp. Um, I know that a lot of people use Eventbrite. Whatever your platform of choice is where you're using to register folks for your event, you can download a CSV file uh, from that platform and simply upload it here. And those would be the people who can access this event uh, by simply going to the page. And so that's kind of a, an another way, maybe you want people to pay because pay is not lined up, it's not included here, similar with Zoom. So if you wanted people to pay, you would have to have another site or something else that you would put it behind a paywall, they would pay. And once you get that registration, you can upload it here and they would have access. So that's what that looks like. And that registration piece is new. Again, you also have emails, you can send confirmation, reminder and thank you emails all here uh, from StreamYard. So there's some there's some, some things that it helps to take care of for you. Um, and then there's some integrations. I know a lot of people were asking for Zapier. This was not there when I did the first video, but you can now actually configure Zapier to do certain things, trigger certain things when people register. And this could be an entire thing in and of itself. Lastly, and I'm going to pull this up, but I want you to know I'm going to blur uh, the email addresses just so, you know, we don't we don't put that out there for everybody to see. But this is what your registrants list looks like here in in StreamYard. And so if you're using this as your primary where people are registering, you can still get this uh, list, export it and put it into your mailing list. I hope you're seeing the idea there. Put it into your mailing list and then you have those to be able to engage with them. You can add them to a, a, a subcategory that's just dealing with the webinar or masterclass or whatever it is you're doing um, with StreamYard and you can actually work with them in that way. So this is what that piece looks like. Now, if we go into this studio right here, I'm actually in the studio. This is me in the studio. And this is from the live show that that we did uh, when I was testing out this feature and I had uh, people actually register. Those are the registrants you saw on the previous page. And these are their comments. I want you to know that these are not comments from LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. These are comments from StreamYard where they're watching the StreamYard on air live show. And you can put those comments right on screen um, in just the same way you would any other time. And now with, with that being said, you, you have the ability to not only have comments, but you can respond to comments. Me, let me say it a different way. There's some a little bit of functionality here that I wanted to highlight. You can you can actually go through and do any one of these emojis to a, a comment, right? You can, you, that's pretty cool. So I can give this person a thumbs up. And again, it just it's just that kind of integration, it's that kind of feedback, that two-way street, that community building activity that that's what this is all about. So that's one thing you can do the emojis, but at just from a, a strategy standpoint, a organization standpoint, you can also star comments. And when you star them, they're added to this starred list and I can bring that up later, maybe during my Q and A portion of the webinar. So you have the ability to do that as well. Then you can also, let's say you have some moderators in the chat, you can actually come in here and pin to on air chat. And when you pin it, it stays at the top. So everybody sees that particular comment. That's pretty cool as well. Lastly, if you come here, you can click on the three dots and you can click invite to studio. You can see that that says it's new. And I have a quick little video um, that was taken. It's an excerpt from our uh, coaching corner, the final coaching corner in the month of February, 2024. This is a clip from that live show uh, where we go over this feature and I have some of my moderators test this feature out and you're gonna be able to see it from both sides. 
So here I'm about to add Florence Donald to the stream. I'm gonna click those three dots by her name. I'm gonna click invite to studio and you can see that green check mark. And so on her side, I'm gonna show you that in a second, but on her side, she's gonna see that pop up come up and she clicks the link and you can see that she just joined in the bottom there, right? You can see Florence Donald has joined us. I'm gonna click add to stream and now she is on screen with me in the webinar and it just is just like that. Just, to, just like that, it's that easy. What I want you to also see is that I can, I am streaming to YouTube as well. And so I bring this person from the webinar audience on screen, but the audience on YouTube can see them as well. Now there is a distinction. I can't bring a YouTube member on screen, right? I can only bring a Zoom, a, a StreamYard on air member on screen, but the person that's watching on YouTube gets the full, full view of everything that's happening, comments, guests that I'm bringing on screen, everything like that as well. And so keep that in mind for some of your strategy as you look to utilize this awesome platform. Uh, going back into StreamYard now, one of the things that you, you do want to make sure is that you are taking advantage of all the different functions and features uh, to be, as you have your guests on, as you have your comments coming through, as you're looking at different things, you can actually uh, 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 pin comments and, and do some of those other things there as well. Uh, design it, make sure that it's designed and it is intentional in terms of of how you are setting your flow. Now, I'm going to invite myself into the studio, right? I just invited myself. Now I'm going to a incognito tab where I have the view, not the produ producer screen, but the view of it. And you can see that that's what the pop-up looks like now, right? And we're just gonna, you can see that there's a time, a, 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 a little line that's kind of decreasing. That is the time that the guest or the viewer or attendee has to be able to respond. And right there at the top, it says the host is inviting you to join the stream. You'll be able to prepare your mic and, um, and, um, um, and audio first, mic and camera first. Now, in that case, I didn't bother to add the, that person to the screen. I didn't bother to add that. I wanted you to be able to see what it looks like. But lastly, I am going to add one more person. This is my other moderator, David Hunt. I'm gonna add them to the screen. I'm just gonna go through the same process again, invite to studio, boom, you can see he comes in. And so when I invite them to studio, it doesn't mean they automatically pop up on screen. I'm able to bring them on screen just as I would any other guest in a StreamYard live stream. And you can see what that looks like on YouTube. This is phenomenal, a really powerful tool from StreamYard that we can use. The recent change to Facebook groups, removing the API and severely hampering how creators engage with their community in a private setting, platforms like StreamYard On Air should be looked at as an answer to the problem. Full production tool, standalone live stream that you can embed on your website, chat integration, and now <laughs> we can bring attendees or paid members, think about that, on screen to ask questions. This is a money-making solution, y'all. If you wanna see a full comparison between StreamYard on Air and Zoom, click right here to watch this video and see how they stack up. <laughs>